This is a Lego plane, and I'm going to build it on a real plane. Roll the theme song. Building a plane on a plane on a plane on a plane. Building a plane on a plane on a plane on a plane. Yeah, I'm getting lots of woodworks from people reading guidebooks. I built it 37,000 feet in the air. That was ridiculously fun. So fun, in fact, that I'm going to build a ton more Lego sets all over Italy, at, on, or in their real life counterparts, starting with Venice. Whoa, I don't think I've ever had this good of a view from a plane window before. I began straight away with the Venice Skyline set, featuring the city's most iconic landmarks. The Rialto Bridge, St. Mark's Basilica, St. Mark's Campanile, St. Theodore and the Winged Lion, and the Bridge of Sighs. But I don't think this set really does Venice justice, a city less about individual landmarks and more about the collective feel of the place. A lot of people who've never been here assume there must be at least some cars, but there are literally none. Where a normal city has roads, Venice has canals and everything is done by boat. From police boats to fire boats, and everything in between. What results is perhaps the most unique city on Earth. And luckily there is another Lego set that perfectly captures exactly this. The Venetian Houses. And what better place to build it than the rooftop terrace of an actual Venetian house, overlooking the canals. This is genuinely one of my favourite Lego sets I think I've ever built. The architecture, the detail, the colours, it's beyond gorgeous. Plus the view was magnificent, the weather glorious, and the whole day just unequivocally perfect. It even comes with a gondola. Before we leave Venice, there's also this printed tile of a Lego Vitruvian man, and the real version of Da Vinci's masterpiece is located in the vaults of this art gallery. However, due to its age and sensitivity to light, it only goes on display for a week or two every six years. Anyway, let's head to our next stop, if only very briefly, Pisa. Of course, I had to start with the Leaning Tower. At first you just build it upright, and it's only at the end you attach it to these hinges to give it the iconic slant. And I must say, it does lean actually very significantly. It's really quite spectacular. Now, I'd only been in Italy a few days, but already I'd eaten a frankly obscene amount of pizza, so I thought I might as well build a pizzeria. This is the Modular Jazz Club, featuring a bright yellow pizzeria on the side. There's a Vespa, an awning with the Italian flag colours, a kitchen complete with traditional pizza oven, and even a rooftop greenhouse where the chef grows fresh ingredients. And just like with the plane, building the set at a real pizzeria earned me some very strange looks. Yeah, I think the staff are staring. But aside from pizzas, canals and things that lean, Italy is very famous for its cars and transport in general, home to some of the most iconic vehicles in the world. So next, I'm going to build a Fiat 500, inside a real one. Cue the theme song. Wait, we've already done that. Um, cue the upbeat music? This was just delightful, driving around in a car little bigger than a toy itself. There was no power steering, and obviously no aircon. I am literally dripping with sweat right now. I should point out, this was during the so-called Settimana Infernale heatwave, and it was hot. Look what happened when I left a Lego brick out in the sun. I'm kidding, that's one I pre-melted earlier. But it was exceptionally hot. Still, the breeze of the open windows was glorious, and building the Lego car inside the real one even more so. It's finished, and just look how cute it is. It's adorable. The detail and accuracy was phenomenal. The sunroof, the badge, the steering console, the curved windows, and this whole back section here. I mean, every element is matched perfectly. To create a Lego set, every bit is charming as a real thing. And for good measure, I also built Luigi, this tiny Fiat 500 from Pixar's Cars. Which brings us to our final city, and we're not going to need a map to find our way because, terrible pun incoming, all roads lead to Rome. A massive thanks to my parents for joining Danielle and I in Rome, particularly my mum who actually drove the Fiat. The car was tiny, very old and very difficult to drive, let alone on the wrong side and in erratic traffic, so I'm incredibly grateful. Thanks mum, and also thanks to Francesco for sorting everything out so last minute. Anyway, sticking to the transport theme, I built a Ferrari, perhaps the most Italian car of them all. And this one even features Italian flags. Then I built a Roman chariot at Circus Maximus, Rome's giant chariot racing stadium, which I guess sort of technically counts as transport. This next one definitely does though, and it's one I was incredibly excited for, a Vespa. This was so much fun. It was a tour driven by a guide, with Danielle and I alternating between holding onto the back and sitting in the sidecar, which made me feel like Gromit from a close shave. See, this is what I'm on about. I have to confess though, I didn't actually build the Lego Vespa in the Vespa itself. That would have been impossible, but I did risk it to at least get this shot. 
Oh, and here's me pretending to drive it, even though Simone, Oliver and Stefano did all the hard work, so thanks a million. I also built this much bigger Vespa, although I think I prefer the smaller one. Moving on to minifigures. I built Julius Caesar beside a statue of him, a gladiator outside the Colosseum, a Roman soldier outside the Roman Forum, Michelangelo at the Piazza del- Wait, wrong Michelangelo. And Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket beside this creepy wooden model. There's also this minifigure of a Roman commander, but I mean, it's not like anyone actually dresses like that, right? Well, yeah, that's right for once. This behind me is actually a green screen because Rome has banned people from dressing like this for extorting tourists, so I've had to do my own cameo. I guess I should give an honourable mention to Mario, though he's not exactly a minifigure, nor is he exactly Italian. Now this final section is all about landmarks, starting with the Trevi Fountain. Finished in 1762, the fountain is utterly spectacular. Seriously, I don't quite know how to describe its grandeur. The Lego set does a reasonable job, portraying its statues, horses and coat of arms, but the real thing is just so extraordinary. At this point, I started to feel a little Rome sick, missing my cats Ralph and Bella. So next I visited Largo de Torre, Argentina, the ruins where Julius Caesar was murdered by Brutus on the Ides of March, but today home to a cat sanctuary. The cats do a very good job blending in, but the closer you look, the more you see. In fact, the ruins are home to over 100. There is no corresponding Lego set, so I built my own, also home to countless cats, hiding in every nook and cranny. And of course, it's time to ask, does it come with a Lego frog? Yes, hiding over here. That reminds me, check out these real frogs I saw in Pisa's botanical gardens. I also made a second custom Lego set for the penultimate landmark, Vatican City. The Vatican is the world's smallest country at only 0.19 square miles and sits entirely within Rome. It has a wonderfully square flag which I tried my very best to replicate. And lastly, the grand finale, a set so colossal that it's even named that, the Colosseum. So I've rented an apartment to build it over the next couple of days and ignore the bush, but how amazing is that view? That's one of the wonders of the world. I've actually built this before, and in terms of actual building experience, it's the single most boring, difficult and repetitive Lego set to ever exist, pretty much entirely beige, and taking literally days to build. But I guess Rome wasn't built in a day, so here's a very beige montage. That took beiges. Yeah, don't ask. However boring the build was, the finished thing was incredible. A perfect copy of the real Colosseum, down to the smallest of details. Building it here was a humbling experience. It made me feel incredibly small against the backdrop of thousands of years of history, as well as exceptionally lucky to have had these wonderful adventures. Thanks to everyone who helped out in this video. Now to somehow make some Rome in my suitcase. Because I'm going home. And building home.